Brothers and sisters, looking today at Ezekiel chapter 16, I have been thinking and really praying about some of the subject matter that I'm about to share with you for weeks and years, actually. Um, how do I say this? God takes us when we are in our own blood, basically just dead, and he speaks life into us. He breathes the breath of his life into us. He looks at us struggling in our own blood. He looks at us as dead people and he puts life into us. And he's looking for us to respond by living for him. But what happens is so many born again Christians, so many people who are followers of Jesus, then they, they choose to go back into the flesh, the world, the devil. They choose to cheat on God with other lovers. They commit adultery against him. They worship other gods. They may not call it other gods. They may not call it Allah, or they may not call it Krishna, or they may not call it Buddha, or they may not call it fill in the blank. But they, they worship their family or their work they worship their ability to provide and earn a living. <clears throat> um, they worship the pleasure of their flesh. They worship unclean sexuality. I did that after becoming a Christian. I worshipped the pleasure that came from sexuality outside of marriage. Many people worship status. They worship fame, popularity, notoriety. They worship having a good name. They worship looking good, feeling good, having people thinking that they are good. I will always confess myself to be weak and evil outside of Jesus Christ. I am not some strong man. I am weak. I am needy. I am absolutely dependent on the Lord God of heaven and earth who took me out of my blood. He clothed me. He washed me. He put his garments on me, even his ornaments. Here in Ezekiel 16, we see how God took the people of Israel. He said, you were like a child who was not pitied, who had no compassion from any parents, you were left to die in a pool of your own blood. He said, but I came and I said to you, live. I said to you, live. And I caused you to thrive, God said to his people. I caused you to thrive. I put life in you. I made you to live. He said, when you became of age and your breasts were formed, I covered your nakedness. I, I clothed you in rich garments. Not only that, but it says that God put fine clothing on his bride, on Israel, on the church. He, he not only took clothing, but the finest clothing, the finest silks and linens. And then it says he actually put a bracelet on her wrist, a nose ring in her nose, and a necklace on her neck. Gold and silver, the finest of the finest. For those Christians who say that women can't wear any kind of jewelry or nice clothing, they're wrong. God clothed his bride, Israel, with the finest clothing, the fanciest jewelry, wonderful gold and silver. I'm not saying that women should wear all these things. I'm just not saying they can't wear all these things. There is no law about it. In the New Covenant where it says that your beauty should come from the inner person, not from the outer adornment, Paul, the Holy Spirit through Paul, is not making a law that women cannot, must not wear fancy clothing or jewelry or braiding of the hair, etc., He's saying that that should not be your focus. Your focus should be on the inner person, on the soul, the spirit, on being mindful of God in Christ, living a holy life, a quiet life in the Lord. <clears throat> Digression. God saw us dead 
and he said live. But unfortunately, most Christians at some point seem to choose to go back to their death. They choose to go make idols for themselves. They choose to go into all kinds of sin and wickedness, just as God's people did in the old covenant. So we have done in the new covenant. <clears throat> he says, because you did not remember the days of your youth, but agitated me with all of these, surely I will recompense your deeds on your own head, says the Lord Yahweh, Jehovah. God will pay us back for our wickedness if we choose to go live in sin. He says, how degenerate is your heart? We're in Ezekiel chapter 16. Your fame went out among the nations because of your beauty, for it was perfect through my splendor, which I had bestowed on you. But you trusted in your own beauty, played the harlot because of your fame, and poured out your harlotry on everyone passing by who would have it. He says that they even took their garments that God gave them and they adorned the, harp, the high places with them. He said they took the silver and the gold that he gave them and they made and fashioned little idols to worship. Male images, he says. For God is the masculine and we are the feminine. He is the giver, we are the receiver. And yet we choose to make other things idols as if they give to us. I have to fight the temptation to think that my job is what is providing for me. It is God through my job. Sometimes it comes from this client, sometimes from that client. But it is always the Lord working through this client or that client, through this contractor that I sell for, <clears throat> or through that contractor that I sell for. God is my source and not any of them. I must not worship them. I must not turn to them as my male image. I must not see them as my provision, my provider. He is our provision. He is our provider. We must remember the days of our youth when we were naked and bare, struggling in our blood. That's the problem God had with Israel. He says, and in all your abominations and acts of harlotry, you did not remember the days of your youth when you were naked and bare, struggling in your blood. <clears throat> God is looking for people who will remember their helpless state, that they would cling more and more to him, hoping in him, allowing him to help them. God washed us. Amen. He put that jewel in our nose, the beautiful crown on our head, the earrings in our ears. Brothers and sisters, he spread his wing over us and covered our nakedness. He covered our nakedness. He brought us in the covenant with himself, declaring us to be his, his bride, his wife, he made us thrive. He said to us in our blood, live, live. Amen. He had compassion on us. He pitied us where no one else did. I want to share one thing that God said through the prophet Ezekiel in the same chapter about Sodom. He said about Sodom concerning their sin. He said, this was the iniquity of your sister Sodom. She and her daughter had pride, that's first. Fullness of food, that's second. And abundance of idleness, that is, they did not strengthen the hand of the poor and needy. <clears throat> so they were all about themselves. And then he says they were haughty and committed abomination. But really their main sin was pride being overfed and unconcerned about others. I don't want that to be the case for me. I want to make sure I stay humble and needy in the sight of God. I want to be sure 
that I'm not just trying to get and get and get. But remember, Jesus told Paul it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. Amen. Let's be givers, brothers and sisters. Let's follow the example of Jesus Christ who laid his life down for others. Not trying to get for himself. He said, the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Let us follow the example. Let us not be like Sodom. Let's be humble instead of arrogant. Let's be willing to sacrifice instead of always trying to be overfed, so full to overflowing. And let us look to not be idle, but to work for others. Let us not look to be unconcerned, but to strengthen the hands of the poor and the needy. Amen. This was Ezekiel chapter 16. As I said, it's been on my heart for years. Um, this morning I woke up and I was going for my prayer walk and I just felt like I was supposed to go to Ezekiel. So I flipped open and found Ezekiel and landed right here <clears throat> in this chapter that I have read quite a few times over the years and prayed about and talked with the Lord about, meditated on. I hope this word blesses you. I hope you'll remember where God found you, that you won't forget it, that you will choose to think of yourself as weak and needy, dependent on him, not taking your beauty and splendor, your fame as if your own, but recognizing that he gave you everything you have. Paul had to rebuke the body of Christ at Corinth. If you received it as a gift, then why would you boast? Everything we have is a gift, brothers and sisters. Whether natural or spiritual, whether emotional or mental, relational, vocational, every good and perfect gift comes down from above, from the Father of heavenly lights. Father, I thank you, Lord, God of heaven and earth. I praise you in the name of Jesus. I come to worship you. Lord, help us to be humble in your sight. Help us, God, to be dependent and needy on you. And help us to want to give and not only to receive. Lord, bless us. Make us a blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you on the Lord. May we always be blessed in this sense. Acts 3.26 says that God sent Jesus to bless us by turning us away from our sins. Let's not seek to be blessed. Oh, gimme, 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 more, more, more. I want to go get this, that, and the other. But let's be blessed. Let's be turned away from sin. Let's walk holy as he is holy, upright in heart. Let's be content with what we have, and let's always strive for perfection in Christ. Righteousness, love, and obedience by grace through faith. My name is Joshua Gravis here on YouTube, over on Facebook, and on PayPal. All three spelled the same way, J-O-S-H-U-A-G-R-A-V-I-S, -S, Joshua Gravis. Glad you guys are here. Thanks for watching. If you want to be in touch, my number is 571-466-0085. We can talk, pray. <clears throat> I'm a realtor. I can help you buy, sell, or invest. I'm a project manager in construction. I can help you build a shopping center or a house, an addition, remodel, whatever you need. All right, guys. Thanks again for being here. Have a good day with Jesus, and let's talk soon. Goodbye, everybody.